The other day I was just talking about how people are reinventing computing for AI and just days after we got something that looks like machine learning is about to be reinvented too. And if this new paradigm works on sequential data, we are looking at around 10 times more efficiency than what we currently have for large language models. And so we got machine learning 2.0 before GTA 6, I mean GPT-5. Okay, but what is it? Are there actually no caveats? I guess we'll find out today how well this new paradigm called Komogorov Arnold Network, short for can will replace our standard multilayer perceptron aka our good old trusty feed forward neural networks but before having my explanations and the equations melt your brain have you ever felt like you have a million things going on with ai tools but no central place to organize it all let me quickly introduce you to this ai task delegation playbook to help you actually understand your workflows and save some of your precious time hubspot has put together a dynamic ai task playbook for you to improve your efficiency and performance where you can keep track of all the ai tools you use monitor your own productivity and organize your AI task assignments. And it's pretty easy to jump right in and use it. Ultimately, by organizing your AI tool usage, you can see the big picture impact of what you're doing and figure out how you can improve the flow. Personally, my favorite section is the task delegation effectiveness calculator. It shows me how well the current tasks that I've delegated to AI tools have been optimized and I can easily monitor the impact of my task delegation strategies. So to start optimizing your AI workflows and save time, simply check out the link down in my description to access this free resource. This playbook was made by HubSpot and thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Anyways, with the mathematical intensity that the Kent's research paper gives off, it's actually based on a pretty straightforward intuition which you can definitely comprehend. So most AIs right now, ranging from ChatGPT, image generation, and even text-to-speech, uses some sort of neural network that generally looks like this, which is called Multilayer Perceptron, short for MLP, as long as you squint hard enough. And to elaborate a bit more, an MLP's goal is to pick the correct output for a given input by activating a correct sequence of neurons. And this is where weights comes in, as weights are the only adjustable parameters that will determine whether or not a signal is being sent to the next neuron, every weight needs to find a suitable value, and with a chain reaction, all neurons will ultimately activate the correct neurons at the very last layer, which would also represent as the output. And to increase the complexity, all the signals a neuron receives will be tested by an activation function, which is a fixed mathematical formula, and only if if it passes the test, the signal would then be passed down to the next neuron. So when people say they are training an AI, weights are actually the only parameters that are getting trained and updated in order to get the network to respond to a correct output. But with the new paradigm CAN, they have basically converted the fixed activation functions into a type of curve called B-spline that can be parameterized and include these into the trainable parameters alongside the weights. So to summarize, CAN basically parameterized the activation function to make it trainable. But what even is a B-spline? A basic spline function, aka B-spline, is a simple way to parameterize a curve. You can think of the trainable parameters of the B-spline as like a series of points that are like magnets, which will pull the curve and change its shapes. This set of points is called a grid. B-spline is commonly used in graphics thanks to its unique property where it is smooth anywhere, including the edges, even though it is a combination of different polynomial functions, which is perfect for modeling complex smooth shapes and surfaces, but this property itself is also a double-edged sword. Since it is a continuous function, it will be near impossible to learn non-smooth or fractal functions. Other than this, its recursive nature where it has to break down its polynomials causes the computation efficiency to decrease unattractively. Some people even said B-spline is not really necessary and the recursive properties can be avoided easily. But anyways, the million dollar question now would be who would win, CAN or MLP? The current empirical results are pretty split, and you can already tell from what we have discussed so far in the B-spline aspect. But if we look beyond that, there are still different aspects like neuron counts, number of trainable parameters, and even the model complexity that are heavily under immense research and discussions right now. From only looking at the Ken research paper though, they have shown that with the same neurons, Ken outperforms MLP in terms of accuracy and interpretability. Interpretability is also the key selling point that Ken has thanks to its decomposable grid within B-spline. So instead of interacting with an MLP black box, you can easily interpret what the model is doing since the B-spline is a set of function compositions. In the paper, they even show that they're able to prune a specific set of nodes that reacts with an input to extract their precise formula with 95% accuracy. However, we don't really know how well that will scale. But with learnable activation functions, the authors were able to demonstrate that Ken can approximate the functions well, independent of the data dimensions, and overcome 
filming The Curse of Dimensionality. For a bit more context, The Curse of Dimensionality is a phenomenon where the data would behave unexpectedly when the dimensions get too high and would never happen in low dimensions. Let me just quickly give you an example. Let's say you and your best friend share three hobbies and when you're trying to find relations between people from just those three hobbies, you and your best friend would be ranked with the highest compatibility. However, when you start incorporating other information, which would be equivalent of increasing the dimensions of the data, something like their favorite food and color, or even random ones like their birth dates and phone number, your compatibility with your best friend would slowly decrease and become the same with literally anyone, because there are too many things to consider to a point that either everyone is not compatible with everyone other than themselves, or everyone are equally compatible with literally everyone else. And that is one example of the curse of high dimensionality. So back to what we were talking about, in terms of capability for the mathematical laws in knot theory, Ken is able to use only 200 parameters to outperform an MLP with 300,000 parameters, which shows that Ken is more parameter efficient, so it requires less amount of data and can converge faster than MLP. They were also able to show in a simple experiment that Ken is able to remember data better while MLP can forget catastrophically. While they claim that the scaling law of Ken is actually better, the caveat is looking like it's easier to overfit, but we'll get to that later. So if we extrapolate the author's findings extremely optimistically, Ken is 100 times more parameter efficient. But it is still 10 times slower to train than MLP. However, even after this 10 times slowdown, we are still left with 10 times more efficiency. So a 10B Ken model will be equivalent to a 100B MLP model. So we would get models that uses 10 times less VRAM, and we are also not counting the benefits that the scaling law might provide. But unfortunately, what Ken has been tested so far doesn't include sequential data, so we don't really know if Ken will work as the building block for language models. They also put out a flow chart for people to reference when to use Ken. But even the author admits that the use cases are more speculative and at the end of the day is just design choices to an extent, just like MLP in some cases. On the other hand, the real juice of Ken comes out of the research community, and empirically, people have speculated that in the results, the authors did not train the MLPs well enough, so MLP do perform on par and even better than Ken sometimes. Furthermore, since Ken and MLP are both a universal function approximate, if you set up Ken with a grid that is the same in every activation and readjust the setup, oh look, isn't that MLP? Not to mention, the overfitting aspect of Ken might be a potential downfall. As real life data are pretty noisy by nature, Ken is not as resilient to that and MLP would still outperform Ken in a simple toy example. But the ease of overfitting might work well in some aspects of machine learning. It may be great for 3D reconstruction like Nerf, where models are overfitted on purpose which can potentially pivot the field back into AI from Gaussian splats. But anyways, we are literally still in the early days of Ken. We know how to use MLP thanks to the past few decades, so comparing between MLP and Ken can still be a bit iffy, and there is still a lot to figure out for Ken, but I am hopeful about the potential optimizations that may come out. I think the main takeaway here is that Ken is cool because it technically needs less parameters, and it also provides a rigorous way to do AI interpretation, which opens the door for practical usages in engineering and physics. The downside is it seems very difficult to train and researchers would need more time to figure out if it's actually worth developing or not. So definitely keep your expectations low for this one. I'll probably give it like a 8.5 out of 10 on my cope meter as it is a bit overhyped because only toy examples are outperforming MLP so far. But these conclusions are based on the fact that the MLP baseline aren't properly trained. Like the learning rates are not tuned optimally which resulted in an unfair comparison. A GPT-2 implemented with Ken was also published and showed that Ken is only slightly on par with Transformers, even though it uses 25% less parameters. Overall, it does look like an interesting theoretical paper and it seems kind of worth exploring in this parameter efficient direction as we are slowly hitting a wall in compute with scaling MLP. Thank you for watching. Sign up to my newsletter if you haven't. I have revived it and posted two new issues already with the goal of letting you comprehend a paper's impact easily and fast with no noise and have images alongside explanations. It'll recap the top news and AI research in the past week, including research progresses I might not have time to make a video about, so with this, you can easily digest them in your free time. But anyways, a big shout out to Andrew Laschelias, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Deegan, Alex Marie's, Migulim, 
the foul and many others that support me through patreon or youtube follow my twitter if you haven't and i'll see y'all in the next one